Happy New Year and welcome to Where You Live. We today are going to learn all things recycling. We are going to learn about the top five places to go diving in Campbell River. We're going to do a little burlesque dancing because we can and some extreme science. And we are going to start right here in Powell River with the team called Let's Talk Trash. We are here in Powell River Town Center in front of the Recycling Depot. Ty Omen, part of the Let's Talk Trash team. I love that name. How did you guys get going? Uh, it started with a request for proposals for the regional district and my colleague Abby wrote a proposal that was accepted and we became the waste reduction educators for the Powell River Regional District. We've been going about five years now. All right. Now here at this depot, what can you recycle? How easy? It's pretty easy to recycle. We've tried to make it as much of a one-stop shop as possible. So we have the Recycle BC streams, which is six streams, your containers, your fibers, your paper and your cardboard, your foam, which is styrofoam, colored and white, um, and your glass. And then we've also introduced household appliances, batteries, cork, and pens, and Ziploc bags as well. I saw that in one of your videos. We're gonna get to the videos in a minute. I did not know that. That is so cool. It was one of the things that residents were really upset about because it, you know, with Recycle BC, it's printed paper and packaging only. So Ziploc bags are considered a product. They come inside a package. And so we talked to our local Walmart and asked if they would accept our, our plastic bags, the Ziploc and garbage bags in their recycling stream. And they said yes. So we collect them and then we bring them to Walmart and they send them off to Cascades Recycling, I believe. Cool. Very cool. Okay, so how many depots in the Powell River District? There's seven depots. We have uh, the outlying regional district is really well covered, and then we have this depot, which is our town center depot, which is serviced by uh, city residents as well as rural residents who come into town. Now, I understand that this particular depot um, came about because the city residents didn't have one. Yeah, so we had these green bins that were located close to here that was that were for recycling. And when those were taken away and it turned into Recycle BC, Multi-Materials BC at the time, city residents didn't have a recycling option. And so they rallied hard and the Powell River Regional District was able to provide this depot for city residents. Yes. Now, Let's Talk Trash um, created videos. So very quickly, how did those videos come to be? We were asked by Recycle BC to be community champions. So it was a contract directly with Recycle BC. Uh, we got to choose what we wanted to do. We sent them our proposal and they accepted it and one of the thought one of the things we wanted to address in our community were the more confusing items yeah, to recycle. Yes. Okay. So that was the plastic stream, which so plastic bags and overwraps, foam and um, the container stream because it's a mix of plastic, metal and paper all in one. Okay. So we wanted to explain those streams as well as how to set up your recycling at home to match the Recycle BC stream. Awesome. Ty, thank you so very much. Thank you. And now we are going to watch one of those videos. But first, I just want to explain when you come back, we're going to be talking all about composting with one of Ty's co workers. And now we're going to watch a video on styrofoam. Check it out.
When you come to the Town Center Recycling Depot in Powell River, you can also bring your compost right here. <laughs> and joining me is Ingelise. Now, Ingelise, explain to us about the compost. Well, the compost project is something we're really excited about. It's a pilot project, and there's actually two different pilot projects that are happening right now for composting. It's important because it's basically the largest piece of the pie when it comes to the waste stream. So if you do a waste composition study, you find that about 40%, so like nearing half of a person's garbage is compostable. So that includes things that people may not be aware are compostable, things like paper napkins, you know, like food soiled paper, for example, and all of that is now acceptable here as, at this drop-off program and it started about a year and a half ago and so this is at the same location as you mentioned and then now there's also a pilot project as a curbside pilot project so there's 400 homes that have been selected in Powell River and uh, the city is going to be going to each home to do the pickup and we'll be seeing how that goes. That's really interesting so people can actually take their composting that they've collected in their kitchen for the 400 homes that have been selected put it at the end of their driveway and it gets picked up from them. That's right yeah so that's the the idea is that the long-term vision would be all homes would have access to that and in the meantime this has been a very well used drop-off site as along with another one in town where people can bring larger loads if there's because yard waste is included. Now um, the one thing is there information on your website to educate people about what they can compost? Absolutely. We have a really a clear list of what is allowed to be in the compost and what isn't. And so the Let's Talk Trash.ca website has that information along with the WasteWise guide. And uh, one notable thing not to include is compostable plastics. So any, anything right. that's labeled biodegradable or compostable is for a long list of reasons not accepted in this system. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for the information. All of the uh, detailed information to tell you what you can put in your compost is on their website, letstalktrash.ca. And right now we're going to see another one of the videos. I believe this one is all about containers. Have a look. You're watching Where You Live, I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We have moved from the Town Centre Recycling Depot out here to the old incinerator site. Joining me is Mike Wall from the Regional District in Powell River. Mike, what else was this beside, besides an incinerator? Um, well, it was used for the incineration of solid waste materials within the region and then the, uh, a lot of the materials were actually the ash, etc., and other materials were left on site. Um, and scattered throughout the site. There's piles of tires, there's piles of glass, there's uh, old burnt um, Safeway buildings and asbestos and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, drywall, etc. So there's a lot of different materials here and through the closure planning process, uh, they're all identified in the uh, approximate quantities and um, that closure plan uh, is planned to be uh, uh, implemented in 2018, so where we actually start getting to a little bit more detail plan, earthworks starting near the end of 2018. Hopefully. So does that mean you're coming in and cleaning up the site? Exactly, okay. yes. We'll be cleaning up the site and if there's any inert materials or reusable materials on the site, such as the tires uh, and the glass, uh, we plan on incorporating those into the build out of a, uh, you know, top of the line facility for uh, waste reduction uh, and it would be called a resource recovery center. 
And that's the end game is to have that here on this site, is to have a recovery, a resource recovery site. Exactly. So we'll be cleaning the site up from the old past practices and then building a state-of-the-art uh, resource recovery center where it'll give our residents opportunity to divert uh, all sorts of different materials from the waste stream and hopefully drive down our residual waste. Okay. That is amazing. And so this would allow everybody in the Powell Re River Regional District, um, as far away as Lund and Saltry Bay, to come here to participate in that. Exactly. Uh, come and participate, divert materials from their waste, so a lower lower cost disposal because somebody else may, may want that material. Yes. And also on that flip side, the people that want it, it'll give them an opportunity to be able to gather those materials for uh, arts or for building projects and all those type of things. It's funny you mentioned the tires because um, recently I actually bought a, a doormat for my front door and it's made out of old tires. Like all of those things are now making it into the mainstream for consumers. Exactly, and we've uh, we've done some tests at our downtown depot. Uh, for instance, we've got people that are wanting to collect wine corks and uh, and um, you know for reuse for soles of, of sandals and that type of thing or art products, etc. Well, Mike, thank you so much. Um, the Let's Talk Trash team actually prepared a video on what you're going to be doing here. So now we're going to have a look at that video. It gives us a little bit more information about what's going to happen here at the old incinerator site. There's literally thousands and thousands of tons of discarded materials on this 18-acre site. This is only one pile. From the early 1970s to 1995, the Marine Avenue site across the road from Willington Beach was used to operate a solid waste incinerator. This is a giant glass pile. Not only glass, I see a battery up there, there's some window panes. When incineration stopped, materials including ash, glass, tires, roofing, asbestos were left on site. It's not very attractive and even the tires are trying to roll out of here. In 2017, the Powell River Regional District was awarded a $6 million grant to close and remediate the site and build a state-of-the-art resource recovery center in public green space. We kind of envision Willingdon Beach to have extra overflow parking, extra area for all the tent campers for the bike race, sort of a, a greenway that comes in and interweaves and, and works through the, the resource recovery center and also projects itself further up towards through the forested lands to the complex. Powell River is at a bit of a crossroads with its solid waste management. Currently, we are exporting our solid waste 770 kilometers one way to Washington State to a landfill. We identified the opportunity to accomplish two things on the site, not only the remediation, but also the build out of a resource recovery center. Materials can be diverted from the waste stream for use by local artisans, for repair, and also will enable disposal of non-recyclable items as residual waste. For the Resource Recovery Center and residual waste transfer, we've studied many recently built sites to look for best practices and the, the build out of the facilities. Since this facility was all about facilitating zero waste, we wanted to design a facility that had as many green features as possible that walked the talk. Natural daylight, green roofs on the scale house and on the operations building, a geothermal energy, a slinky is how we get our heating and cooling, rainwater harvesting. The whole site actually has got been landscaped to meet um, zero waste principles and this facility, we did actually build it to lead gold standard. So this site right now is, is you know, deemed a contaminated site by the Ministry of Environment and we're struck with having to uh, deal with it. But really for us, once we rem remediate it, it's this, this incredible palette to, to build this vision. This opportunity doesn't come around to every regional district or over every local government. We're really fortunate to have uh, you know, been awarded the $6 million and here we are. We're going to be able to clean up the, uh, the heart of Powell River and, and make it actually the green heart of Powell River. You're watching Where You Live on Shaw TV's Channel 4. Now it's time for some extreme science. Extreme science. All right, now for some more extreme chemistry. What we got over here is we're gonna simulate 
crushing a can. All right, there we go. So what I've got over here is some water. I'm gonna bring it to a boil. And more specifically, I want this to be super, super, super hot. I want like steam coming out. I want this to be extreme. So we're gonna bring this to a boil. We're gonna have steam. This steam, as it forms inside, is gonna expand. It's gonna occupy a lot of space. And then what we're gonna do is something that's really crazy. We're gonna crush it. I'm not gonna crush it. Instead, this water is gonna crush it that we got over here. This is ice water, nothing more than that, just some ice water. So we got a lot of steam coming out. So we got a lot of vapor pushing out. I'm gonna turn this off, get this out of the way. I'm gonna grab this, and there we go. You wanna see that again? So what just happened was we had all that vapor, it expanded, pushed out. I put it inside this cold water. So what does that do? Cause all that vapor, which is out, to start contracting, which creates a vacuum. It's got two choices. When I put that can upside down, the opening inside the can can either pull the water up against gravity, which is really not gonna do, or it can create the vacuum and crush the insides of the can, which is what it did super fast. That's pretty cool stuff. Cool, like ice cool. I'm Mary Ritharis, you're watching Where You Live. We have been in Powell River today talking with the Let's Talk Trash team all about recycling and composting and the brand new resource recovery center that they are going to be building at the old incinerator site. It's gonna be pretty neat. And now we are heading over to Vancouver Island where we are going to be speaking with a representative from Emterra about their single stream recycling. But up first, the top five places to dive in Campbell River. Hi there, it's Catherine from GoCampbellRiver.com bringing you the five top diving sp spots in the Discovery Passage. Jacques Cousteau rated the Discovery Passage and the Georgia Strait as having the best cold water diving in the world. Number one, Whiskey Point the Rock. The dive is about 60 to 70 feet and what you're going to find here is wool fields. Now the rock that you can see in the background right now isn't necessarily visible at all tides. The tide is really quite low right now. It's actually starting to move and you can see that it's really moving. So in this area, make sure you understand what the tides are doing before you embark on your dive. So dive site number two is Rowanby Dam, which goes from Kwathiaski Cove to April Point. About 60 to 80 feet, you're going to see a lot of strawberry sea anemones. As a matter of fact, there are walls and walls of them. And this is unusual because you don't see this everywhere. This is just in this area or in California and nothing in between. Especially the massive concentration of these absolutely beautiful red walls. Number three, Steep Island. Very, very steep dive, very deep dive, up to about 90, maybe even to 100 feet. But what you're gonna see here is northern feathered duster worms, clusters of them, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands of them. They're really large. They can be up to two feet tall. You might even see them a little larger than that here, but then they flower out like a bouquet of flower in deep reds and purples, and it is gorgeous. Number four, Copper Cliffs. Straight out of the water, 100 feet out of the water, straight down, 90 feet down. And what you're gonna see is Puget Sound King Crab, big ones. You're also gonna see some octopus and lots and lots of bottom fish, as well as a great deal of huge boulders for all this stuff to hide in. So this is a definitely must to put on your list. So number five is the Argonaut Wharf. Now this is probably one of the only shore dives you can do in this area. It's not very deep, 30 feet to maybe 50 feet overall, but the pylons themselves are full of life. They have all kinds of invertebrates that are actually attached to them. There's octopus down there, there's crab down there, and it's a very interesting dive, and it's also a fairly short dive. So this is definitely one that you wanna try first. 
And finally, when you come diving in Campbell River, make sure you have your dive flag. And if you see a dive flag and you're boating in the area, stay away at least 100 meters and give the divers lots of room. And let's make sure that you check your tides and go talk to the locals. Don't go diving here without knowing what, you're, what you want to do. It may be beautiful, but it can also be quite dangerous if you're not prepared. So talk to your locals, check your tides, make sure you have your dive, your dive flag up and be safe. I'm here at one of the Comox Valley locations for recycling. I've brought my recycling and it says single stream recycling. I can bring my newspapers, my tin food cans, my mix paper, my mix containers, which is all the plastic stuff, and my corrugated cardboard. And it all goes in one bin. Okay, so I'm gonna put it all in one bin. There it goes, all in one bin. It's in paper bags. Now, what happens? Let's find out. We are here at the MTERRA facility in Cumberland. Joining me is operations manager Dave Ross. Okay, when we go to any one of the locations where all of those bins are, how many are throughout Comox Valley and Campbell River? Six, Six in total. In total, okay. Plus the blue boxes that get picked up from the side, those are all single stream recycling. Right. Okay. No sort required. No sort, no sort required. I remember the days when we had to sort it. How come we don't have to sort it anymore? We prefer to have it picked up off of the street or off of those bins in single stream form. We'll sort it when it comes through the plant. Okay, when I saw the signage, single stream, I'm like, yeah. why don't I have to sort it? Look at this pile, this is crazy. Yeah. So this is everything that ends up in those bins. Every day, every day it comes in just like this. Okay, so what is the things that end up in here that you don't like? Let's have a look at that. Okay. Well, right here I caught this. Somebody's thrown this in thinking it's recyclable and it's really not. Okay. The system will pick this out as garbage. Oh, okay. And then we will have to get rid of this as garbage. Okay. But everything else in here, you've got plastics, you've got mixed paper, you've got, got cardboard cans. <laughs> cans. Got hard plastic, the milk jugs. Wow. Okay. All right. So now right because that's well what somebody has done here is they've put this to the into the bin and they've bagged everything up a lot of this has fallen out but film plastic we don't want to see go through our system it gets tied up in all of the discs that help sort the material out as it goes through so all right so there's two things you absolutely should not put in these bins there's another place where you can take plastic bags all right, so now that we've seen how it comes in, how on earth do you get it sorted? I can show you that. Let's go. This is where it enters our system. Bobcat feeds it from the pile into that conveyor. So after it's entered the system, it'll go through our first screen. We want to pull out all the cardboard, It'll pull out some of the contamination as well, and it drops it into this bunker here. We'll resort that because it has brought in contamination as well. And now they'll go through a, another screen, another sort, where now we're trying to get the paper up onto our two paper lines, and the tin and the plastic will fall and go through our bottom sort conveyor. It'll follow through on the system, We've got two lines to separate the paper. The cans will come down onto that lower conveyor. They're picked up with the magnet. Paper goes into the paper bunker and plastics just over here. All of the plastic gets separated. Wow. So that bin is where all the plastics go and the cans get picked up by a magnet and dropped into the blue bin. That's right. And then where do the cans go after they're all in that blue bin? We'll take those cans, put them into a roll-off bin, and then we use ABC Recycling to take our tin. So we take them up to Campbell River and they'll dispose of them further from there. Okay. 
so do they get shredded down and reused for other stuff? Yes, yes. And then what happens to the plastic? We'll bale the plastic, we'll bale the cardboard, we bale the paper. Bobcat was taking the paper from the big pile, putting it on a conveyor belt, taking it up, it goes into the big compressor behind us and it comes out like this, a big bale of paper. All that material that we've just gone through will be processed today and we'll get more of it in. We average in the neighborhood of 45 metric tons a day that we'll get in here, we'll receive and we'll process it through the system. Now we are outside the sorting plant and behind us are big cardboard bales, is that bales. what you call them? Ready to ship. All of this is ready to ship to market and we're just waiting on a truck that we've got an order for that will come in, we'll load it up and that truck will leave here and it, in a container, we're gonna load it out in a container and that container will go offshore. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, the, and so whoever has bought them, then they take it and recycle and create new products? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, Dave, this has been incredibly interesting yeah. and very wow. fascinating. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time. And I'd like to follow up after um, for the next month when we can talk about more of the unusual things that we actually can recycle and what happens to those in that street. Look forward to that. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Unbelievable. So that's what happens to your cardboard, your paper, your plastic, your cans. Pretty cool, eh? And now... We will be back in a minute, literally one minute, right after this inspirational story with a bit of a twist of dance. I was going through a really hard time in my life. I'd suffered a number of losses. I was in a relationship that ended unexpectedly. I actually spent many days contemplating suicide. It was like seven days after the breakup happened that I was like, okay, you gotta get out of bed and you gotta do something. So I literally went and got a good haircut and I entered into a room that I could feel such a cool energy vibrating through. I felt empowered almost instantly. My name is Miss Clara Fox and I'm a burlesque performer. Burlesque used to be looked at in a way to cater to men, but now burlesque is actually meant to cater to the performers themselves more. The most prominent thing that I experience out of doing this is empowerment. Empowerment that I get to share with my audience members and my fans. We have people that join burlesque to kind of get back a piece of themselves that they've lost, either through a sexual trauma or an abuse of some sort. Burlesque gives you a safe platform to express sensuality and sexuality without sex being part of it. I could find that beautiful beautiful, sexy part of myself again. It's an amazing feeling. Great way to start a new year with a renewed outlook and a newfound passion. Whether it's burlesque dancing or embroidery or hiking or washing cars, whatever your passion is, get out there and pursue it. Great way to start a new year. And now you also know everything there is to know about recycling. So happy recycling and happy new year.